Hey there. Thought I'd take you on a tour of our math, uh, math shelves, Montessori math shelves. Um, our homeschool room is never that clean, but right now everything's sort of put away and I switched out and added some different stuff. And so anyway, an abroads and we're missing one for some reason. We have this um, Lakeshore little puzzle through the teens and they put them in order. Um, Josie works with this a lot because she can't seem to uh, figure out how to not skip a number, but she likes it. Um, spindle boxes. So I take this and they count out, you know, how many goes in each one. Michael works with this still a little bit. Uh, I'll probably put that away pretty soon. It's probably time aging out of that. Um, unless there's extensions, if anyone can give me extensions, it's like bundling or something. Um, so this is pretty neat. This is. I don't know if this is traditional Montessori with a bead stare, obviously is, but, um, oh, you like my new nails? Jam Berry. Um, so I found some of these on Teacher Pay Teacher, and, um, so I printed that out as a kind of an assist, even though they don't, they don't really need it, but, and here's little booklets that are cute. There's different, there's like nine different ones in this, um, this lady is amazing. Like you print them out and they come like double sided already to staple. You just cut them and pop the staple in them. They're super easy. So this just goes from one to nine. Um, well, you get the idea. And they color it. So they would go over and get their colored pencils and their, there's a bunch of different books. Um, anyway, and then the actual work for this is um, they, they can use this to assist or you can take this out and do without it um, but they put one through nine here and then they hang the little beads underneath the number they count them one two three four five six seven eight oh it is eight eight yeah Okay, um, so that's that. Little, little Lakeshore um, key things, which, um, you know, they just count the numbers and they look in there to try to find the corresponding little key. Um, there's also the actual word on the other side. Should probably never be a blogger. I can't think and work. Um, I should never do anything if I can't take the end work, huh? That's my boss says. Okay. So, yeah. Um, how do I do this with one hand? Maybe. You have to trust me that works. Key goes in. You turn it. And it pops out. It's pretty nifty. And oops, drop the key on the floor. I did all my Montessori activities with one hand. It makes it that much harder. Anyway, and I just grouped them by color for visual interest because otherwise it looks like a mess. And I have those through, gosh, 30. I don't even know. Um, 100 board. I just divided the little number tiles into baskets from like 1 to 10, 11 through 20, etc. up to 40. Um, Josie hates us, sort of, but it's really helpful for her, um, <laughs> so, you know, math's fun. Okay, this, we've had some different money activities, um, this is just a variation, so it's more interesting, and I had it in little, two little bowls, but I thought this looked more simple with the little printable, and actually, this went up through, um, quarter, but I just cut it in half and laminated it. And, um, man, we need to polish some pennies for practical art. These are looking kind of nasty. And then, mini ladle. Hmm. And then, you know. Yeah, these really are dirty. Nickel. Until go through, and hopefully they can keep thinking. Silver one's five. Penny is one. We had um, an exchange game, but it was too hard for them to remember how much 
each one was worth, so I figure this will be, um, hopefully it'll help them keep the values in mind if they play it pretty opt often. So also of my Montessori shelves, um, it kind of goes in order from left to right, um, easiest on the left and top to bottom, easiest on top to bottom, uh, in general, it doesn't always end up that way, but so this is also something Josie does a lot because she's having a hard time remembering place value. And actually, I have all the pieces in here from one to a thousand. Um, but I'm pretty, and we've been trying for many months to get her to remember a hundred versus thousand, but um, it's not sinking in and it's confusing her. So I think we might just drop the thousand, even though in traditional Montessori. Um, you always have the thousand. You start off even at a very young age teaching them four numbers, which has worked beautifully with Mary. But anyway, um, so that's that's those. And what they do with those is they go, they see, I mean, in a very concrete, cool way. This is probably not the correct way to set this up, but, you know, homeschooling. Um, so there's the unit bead. And then you show them the 10 bead, and you say, one unit bead makes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one 10 bead. There are 10 units in one 10 bead. And you do, there are 10 tens. This doesn't match exactly. I should switch it out. 10 tens in one hundred square. And then there are 10 hundred squares in one thousand cube so cool but anyway um this which is really just super cool that Montessori is so hands-on and concrete and I also I saw this somewhere I don't know if this was I'm sure it's probably not traditional per se but maybe it's a little felt as you can see all of the in all of the Montessori materials with place value um the units are green, the thousands are green, the um, hundreds are red, and the tens are blue, which makes it really cool, even the gridded paper and everything. And I, I made squares to set out to help, you know, help enforce that. Anyway, I didn't know how to set this one up, it's kind of a mess, but... Yeah, I still think it's pretty visually interesting. And even Mary likes to do that, even though she's kind of got it mastered, but it's really good for a movie. Um, this is just for Amazon. Josie likes this one because it's bingo. And it was a really cheap little box, but I thought this basket looks way cuter and instead of the little cheap counters that came with it, which I just saw one on the floor somewhere. They're these nasty little paper things that, oh, sorry, we punched out They're these things. And they kind of got everywhere, but I just took those out and put in. You know, we've been using these for all sorts of math activities. But um, here's like the call sheet. And they shuffle these face down and pick one, and you know how bingo works. But it's a super cheap little bingo set, and there's a whole bunch of different cards. And it helps with number recognition, which Josie needs a lot of practice with. And it's super fun. They like that. Um... Okay, so this we use for our nine layout and I have it all set out. It's just pretty cool. This is another place value activity. Um, okay, so this is the nine layout or whatever it's actually called. That's what I've seen it called. Um, units, tens, hundreds, thousands, this little mat here. And I have, I made some too, but they're like really big and the kids like them, but kind of a pain to roll up. Um, we made them out of felt. But anyway, um, the colors are consistent. Red, even though you know, it's washed out with the green. But they take this little tray down. It's a little heavy. These things are solid. If you drop this freaking thousand cube on your foot, you will break your foot. <laughs> Sorry. They're, I don't want to hurt it, but they're, these are solid blocks. Um, and so when you're stacking nine of these up, it's kind of scary. But <laughs> makes math exciting. Um, you have your nine units, you have your nine ten bars, you got your um, 
900 squares and nine thousands. And what you do is you take your, um, to start off with, you do just the, shoot, I forget if you just do the beads first or if you just do the numbers. I forget, but then at some point, oh, this is why it's good to do on a big map, but I'll show you on the little one. Um, you lay it out like, um, you, yeah, I guess you do your numbers first, but you do, you do this for all of, all of them. So you do one, two, three, four, etc., all the way down, which, um, and then you take your beads. Huh. Anyway, I don't know where one of those just went. Take the beads and you do one, one unit. And you can do one unit and one unit is two units. Two units and one unit is one, two, three, three units. Three units all the way down. And you keep going until you get to nine, eight units, and one unit is nine units. But then ten would be up here, so you have to exchange it for a pin bar. And then one pin bar, and one is twenty. You know, you get the general idea there, but... Okay, so <laughs> the bad thing about these little tiny balls is that they get lost. Uh, just one under the table. We'll find it later. Um, crap. <laughs> All right, but anyway, this is like cool. And we use this for so many different works. It's also the basis of games. And it's just really fun when you're stacking nine of those high. It gets really, it's cool because you can see, oh, one unit is one, but this is a thousand units, and this is 9,000 units. So, my sort math is pretty much the coolest. Um, forgive me while I put this away. I should never have a cooking show ever. Matt, and this is the exchange game. This is like, I feel like an underrated but extremely important math lesson that every kid should do. Like, it's so important when learning addition. It makes everything so easy. It makes, I don't know, like, I feel like it's just the basis of algebra right here <laughs> and math, uh, money, and everything. So, so these are your unit beads again. So you roll a little dice. It's a game. So, of course, they're like, ooh, we exchange game. It's so fun. You have two people or more, or they take it to me and I play with them, but they play with each other too. And they roll it, two, one, two, and they put it in their little pile or the little cup or whatever until, you know, next time they roll, you know, six, seven, eight, the next person goes, they roll whatever. And all of a sudden they have, we're like missing some unit beads. Um, but if they have more than 10 beads, I said, I would like to exchange it. And they count out. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Pretend. And then you, yay, I get a golden bead until you get all the golden beads. And of course, you can keep playing this game until you get ten golden beads until you get a hundred. And then, I don't know. It's, it's pretty fun. I think it's extremely important. And we like it. <clears throat> we play that a lot because it's called a game, so of course it's fun. Um, all right, so we haven't done a lot of multiplication, even though in traditional ones where you do the golden beads, you do you actually do addition, multiplication, subtraction, and division, and then you move on to more um, abstract. But Mary really likes addition, and, and she's getting it really well, and whatever. So. We've been just, we moved on to this, it's called the stamp game, which it's really neat. It's a little more abstract, um, but she's still, she's a good grasp of it. She's six, so it's not outside her age. Um, but 
It's basically exactly like um, using the beads, except for them rolling all over the place. You have these nice tiles and you can do, you know, you can write out your math problems. Here, right, let's draw hearts on everything. She's doing, doing a lot of work lately. Um, anyway. You write out your problem. I would usually just write out, you know, like I'll make a problem for her, and depending on how many exchanges I want her to do, and then she lays it out like, um, like so. Say this was like one thousand one hundred and eleven plus. It's neat too because in a concrete way they can see like um, four is an even number because it has friends. Pretend I'm setting this up right with one hand. It's like, and then say you were doing, I think I have a video for doing this, but. But it's, it's nice because she has to understand how to break down a number into like what it actually means. It's not just some abstract concept. That's eight. Let's do nine. And then how about two hundreds and one thousand. Okay, so then what she would do is she would go, we'd have like a line, we'd go, we go. 1,111 plus 1,294 is, and then you get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, um, and she'd write on the paper, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. We can't write a 10 in a blank, so we have to exchange it. The 10 tens is, you can see how it takes a long time, but it's kind of nice. These are always working and busy. Um, is, when, actually, we would put this like at the top of our mat. Um, Four hundreds and two. So the answer is two thousand four hundred and five. Or put a zero there. Try it. Anyway, you get it. And this is a cool game because it works for everything, including multiplication and division and just whatever you want. You can do concrete. Um, addition, which is pretty, pretty darn cool. So, that, where's the lid? Hmm. There it is. Alright. So, and I love pins. My kids love pins. Oh! Okay. Alright, so show the he shelves. trusty tiny children's chairs okay um, again continuing with it's kind of easier on the top um, these are called some blocks these aren't Montessori at all but they're just neat um, and I have put out math problems for them to build with but they didn't really they didn't think that was so much fun so I probably wait till they're a little older to give them actual problems but I feel like these are very similar to Montessori in concept because they are um, the size that they are is how much they're worth. So it's like a visual representation, you know. So if I wanted to do 5 plus 2 is 7. 7 is less than 9. Here's a 7. Now you can see it's the same height. Well, you know, plus, plus 1. Another one to it and make nine. Five 
plus two plus one and one, or, you know, whatever, you get the idea. This is pretty cool. They can line them up. Um, they can do, they can do multiplication with these two, because they can do, you know, lots of six. Well, see, you can see the difference between a six and a nine. Um, but yeah, you can use these for addition, subtraction, multiplication, um, powers, and I don't think we have enough to do that, but they're pretty darn cool. I like them. But this basket's really heavy, so they usually just fetch some out of there. Um, okay. Gold Mead Books. Again, this is from that same lady I showed you before. I don't know what her actual store is called, but I'm sure if you go to Teachers Pay Teachers and you find this lady. It's just, they're fantastic. She's got such great Montessori, um, you know, workbooklets and things to write on. Super easy to use, and they're all bundled together for a little cheap. But anyway name on there. This is really easy. So this is also a place value with golden beads, which is, those are golden beads. You can tell. Gold. Um, so they count, you know, actually it's a little confusing, but because of the, how thin my paper is, but, um, so one, you would write one unit and you read the blank, but as it's harder, it has to do like nines. They just get what they want because it doesn't really matter to me. Well, here's book three. Let's just focus in on the hundreds. Ooh, okay. Yeah. One, two, two hundreds. So they write two in there and write a two there. Um, and then there's several that are like mixed, so they have to write. Here's book ten. Cute little cube on the front. So they do one, two, three. Three units. One, two, three. Three tens. One, two. Two thousand. And no hundreds. And they write the number on one. So, which is pretty cool. Um, they can all do these, but you know, didn't work isn't their favorite. But I think it's, it adds, yeah, it's a nice little component. Okay, continuing on from the same um, ladies shop. I really, really like her stuff, as I said. So these, this is the tin board, which you can see pretty concretely in here. So these are, th they're all different. 30s, I don't know how many other ones printed out, but these all say 30, 30. Is, um, they take this and they take some scissors, which, Anyway, and then they cut it out and they glue it on here so they'd make 32 paste, right? 32. 37, right? 37, etc. Cutting and pasting. That is a favorite. Um, just a little, uh, that's like, that's like the, the top brand. Is it the? fancy my branding is there not all my stuff is from there those are actually all secondhand gifted which is a beautiful thing um so these are the 10 beads so they can make you know they can actually lay out oh you probably don't even know what it's a 10 board and a teen board look like but they look like this which are inspired by like hemnal um let me say that word wrong but um you know like a church and so they can slide and make Make the numbers, there's like wood numbers in there. Um, and they just basically play around with that and they actually count out with the golden beads again. Um, so they put like, you know, one, ten for ten, and two tens for twenty. And then they also, of course, with this, which I don't think this is the right box, it's not. That's okay though. They uh, have some of these somewhere. They can put, they can do like thirty and put 35 so they can like concretely see it um, there anyway okay this one is yeah. um, this is the hundred chain oh, I don't have hundred chain mat but I want one but they lay this out and do different things um, this is actually a good, in the presentation that I was showing you over here, this, because you can actually see that this is a 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 
and 10. And when we put it together, we get, I don't know if you can write quarter of the amount on the table, but we get 100. And that's equal to the 100. Yeah. Um, but anyway, we're using it to count by tens. So I have these little, I just eliminated little handwritten. So they, there you go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And they put the 10. a lot of my feet in this video, sorry. Um, so you do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, which flips over. So 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. This hasn't actually gotten a lot of attention. Mary can already count by tens. I don't, I don't know how, if it's just memorization or she's actually got the concept, but that's why this will remain on the shelf. And also, Josie cannot seem to figure out, she can't count them. She like re double counts them and she gets the end and it's like 11. No, there's no, there's no 11. It's like, well, it's because these are all worth 10. <laughs> anyway, so good. Even Shelly. This is like that. I don't know what this box is for. Also not Montessori. This is pretty, isn't it? It's a cute little one. It's wooden. Um, T numbers. This is the same as the other hanger, except for it goes 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Oh, it's a 19. And then a little booklet. It's that same lady. They color it and they write the number in. It's just pretty groovy. Hangers. And of course, it's time to make 11. They'd need to hang 110 and one. It. So, that's a really good one for Josie, and she actually likes hanging the beads. Um, this is the snake game, which if I teach you the snake game, it'll just take too long. Which is a really cool game. But um, look, I have an official real little counter thing. I don't know where to get these. People are like, oh, just use red tabs. Like, but I like I like it. I haven't lost it yet. Uh, married in the snake game. Josie sort of could do the snake game. Um, but basically, I feel like there's way too many of these in here. Well, you know what? If you would like to see how to play the addition snake game, you can ask me. Yeah, that's not. I need to set this up better. No one's played this one in a while. Um. Yeah, or you can Google Montessori Snake Game Edition or any other variation. It's really fun. But basically you have to do, um, there's different ways to play it. And you can, you lay out a snake with these beads. And then you count, you do a little counter thingy. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, until you get to 10. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So you put, so you need need to have a place value. One, two, three, a placeholder. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you need to find. It's just, it's really not complicated. I'm not gonna go into it. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's a really very fun game. I enjoy doing it with them, and Mary really likes to play it. But anyway, that tray is way too big. But that's okay. Okay. So we have a lot of stuff, um, but I rotated out. This is this is fun too. So we do some fetching activities with these, which um, these are. Gosh, these might. Yep, yeah, that's the same lady. Look how almost. I think I purchased her whole store or something. Um, so this is good. They want to make 730, or I'll say. They can do this on their own, but they usually take it to me and I'll give them this card and I'll say, can you make 730? And sometimes I'll even give them the 730 so they don't have to remember it or write down 730 somewhere. And then they move over to the little shelf over here. There's our little bank. Our bead bank. And my sister got me this back from Korea and it hasn't broken yet. Um, so they would go back and bring me 700 squares, 3 tens, and no 
in it. Um, and then if they're doing it by themselves, they can just flip it over and double check and see. Um, but I have this through, you know, tens and through thousand. That's what that is. Those are just basically extra, what we call a bank. Um, I need to cut these hearts out. Okay. Anyway, Michael knocked himself in the head with the door this morning, which is pretty traumatic. Um, this, which is really dusty because no one's done that in forever, is just a really easy um, geometry work. Um, actually, you should watch the Margaret Humphrey videos with these. It's super cool. But there's, they are all, well, this one's pretty hard, but there's color on it. These are all second hand, so. Okay, so, like, these are cool. Like, the circles are all slightly different sizes. I think this is technically sensorial, but it's like geometry. So I have it in the math. And what they do is they start with, they start with those shapes and they would match, they would lay these out with the big solid circles and they would go, oh, this is this one, etc. And then the next level is they do this, which is slightly harder, slightly more abstract. And then this one's the hardest, which, honest to God, it is sort of hard to match. I don't think it's just my brain or something, but some of these Montessori works for three to six year olds are like, like the binomial, trinomial cube. You drop that thing on the floor. You mix up your binomial and trinomial cube pieces. It's like taking two, two math equations and you just drop them all over the floor and then try to sort them out um yeah I'm not I don't claim to be the smartest but don't ever mix up your trinomial and binomial cubes together it's very confusing especially the ones we have are like not traditional where are they they're in the other room but they're like I don't know they're like wood colored they're really good okay. um more geometry um different kinds of triangles and as they they put them together to kind of see how you know they match the sides up and they see how to make uh, different shapes. I don't even have the, it's fine. But anyway, same thing with these. And then as they get older, they can say, this is a steering triangle. This is called isosceles. Blah, blah. Anyway, and um, of course these are very hands-on. This, this should actually probably be above the shelf, but it's been dropped. <laughs> cry. These are all the different shapes. Um, and then they can, these are the bases, which is pretty fun. So they can just like hold these and look at these. They, there's names for all these. We haven't even attempted that yet because that's just not on my <laughs> list of things to do. But we can lay out the different shapes and you can see like, um, you know, let me find something else. with a square bottom. So like, oh, this is a pyramid, but look, it fits. No, it doesn't, it's not a pyramid. Just kidding. I swear I'm qualified to teach children. My children. <laughs> There's the pyramid. And look, but it has a square base. But the sides are triangles. Like this. You know. It's the same as this one. This one only has three sides. And so it has a different base. So I probably need to know more about this. But there's also um because I have the stands in here. It's okay. Just be safe with that. Okay, it's sharp. Okay. Just doing a whole bunch of stylus punching. Anyway, so those are our shelves. Mm -hmm. So golden bead bank. Uh geometric Geometric solids, constructive triangles, uh, geometric cabinet, um, fetching activities, um, it's a golden bead book work, 10 bead board, 
Snake Game Edition Teen Number Hanger. Um, what do you call that? 100 Chain Sum Blocks. S U M B L O X, I think. Bingo from Amazon. Uh, something with place value. 90 layout. Numbers. Stamp game. Exchange game with golden beads, which you can do with math. So that way, put those away because they weren't put on. Uh, sorting numbers. Lakeshore locks with numbers. Spindle box. Another board um, bead hanger and the hundred board. Um, that concludes my lengthy, verbose presentation on my math shelves. They will be switched out probably in about a month, and I'll try to do another video then in March. All right, did you enjoy it? I'm so glad. All right, goodbye.